Mark and Sam Billing milk 450 cows on 265 hectares at Larpent, west of Colac. They use a pasture-based system and figure the easiest and cheapest feed source is what they can grow themselves. Originally Mark and Sam's pastures were predominantly Nui perennial rye, with perhaps one paddock of annual ryegrass. Over the past 10 years they have re-sown to newer, better performing perennials such as Avalon, Impact and Banquet and increased the annual and short term component to about 25% with Winter Star 2 and Maverick. By moving to a broader range of varieties of uh, ryegrasses, the Italians annuals and perennials and new, using the newer species that are producing a high dry matter for us, it's created a, a better feed wedge for us over the, the early and late autumn period and also moving into the winter. Using those newer varieties of um, ryegrasses and strategic use of urea, we've been able to produce a larger feed surplus in the springtime that's been able to be transferred into silage and then being fed later in the year. In the failed spring of last year, they cut about 8,000 cubic metres of silage for the milkers and 600 bales of haylage for dry cows and heifers. To help fill feed gaps and maintain production levels, they also buy in grain and some hay on forward contracts. The cows are fed according to production. The performance and condition of each cow is monitored using electronic collars, milk meters and weighing scales. All the information is analysed through a feed balance program to determine the individual feed requirements of each cow. Feeding the production for us has been a godsend, especially with grain prices when they've been high. We've been able to target the higher producers and make sure that they're fully fed. At the same time, we've kept a base level for the rest of the cows to produce to the best of their ability as well. Feeding to production helps Mark and Sam to work out what areas of each forage crop and pasture is required to meet their production targets and plan their paddock renovation program accordingly. Mark and Sam are now trying to spread the risk to cope with the increased rainfall variability by having a variety of pastures and forages across the farm. This diversity gives them something coming on all the time to meet the demands of the herd. Some of the options that we've looked at um, that have come out of the involvement with 3030 has been the lucerne, um, the cereal cropping and some other options like the autumn option of planting brassicas with our annual ryegrass and that has been a big winner for us, providing us with a really good feed base uh, in that early autumn period with our fresh calved cows. This year Mark and Sam tried a mix of apen stubble turnips and annual rye and were extremely impressed with the results. The turnip and rye that we used was dry sown in the autumn, uh, it was sown late March and that provided us with uh, a 4.1 tonne of feed on first grazing with fresh cows and that gave us a really good high quality feed, it was testing out at about 12 ME and 25% protein it was great for fresh cows, carved cows. Lucerne has also been introduced into the forage mix. Impressed with the lucerne grown by others in the area, they recently planted six hectares of Stamina GT6, a summer active dryland variety. Well, with the lucerne we were looking to um, extend our growing season outside the traditional ryegrass growing season and to sort of maximise the rainfall that we got out of season as well over the summer period and get some good quality feed for that period as well. Japanese millet planted with either apen or barkant brassicas are amongst other mixes Mark and Sam are trying. Millet is very water efficient and able to produce considerable amounts of dry matter per millimetre of rainfall. They think it will be useful for early seasonal finishes and utilising summer rain events. I had one summer crop fail so we put millet through that and maximised the rainfall that we did get. And also in uh, our effluent area we've used it as well and got some really good results. Mark and Sam also think cereal rye corn looks promising. With uh, rye corn it's something we've looked at as another element to our feed base. So we're, we're looking at, it's a very short growing period and it gives us an opportunity to use it with summer crops uh, to get it off early around September and then put a summer crop in behind it. It gives us that break as well um, to try and get rid of barley grass which is becoming a bit of a problem across the farm. 
Mark and Sam acknowledge that by introducing forages such as lucerne, millet, rye corn and the brassica rye mix, as opposed to running a predominantly rye grass base, they may not make the most of their exceptionally good years. However, they expect that the production and profitability will improve in the drier years and also across the average of all the years. We're hoping with the, the amount of elements that we have in the feed base now that Depending on the season, we can sort of react to the season, whether it's a dry season or a wetter season. We've got room now within our system to react and, and maximise the rainfall, whether it's out of season or in season. And hopefully that'll, that'll keep the business moving forward. 